In this video, I will show you how you can import any Linux distribution in WSL. In a previous video, I showed you how you can create a WSL Linux distribution from a Docker container. In fact, this method can be used to import any Linux distribution in WSL and also to backup them. Creating a WSL Linux distribution from a Docker container is a little bit different, so if you're interested how that one works, you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. But before we import any Linux distribution, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I am here on the official WSL installation website and if you scroll down here, then here you have a section how to import any Linux distribution in WSL. Basically you have two options. You can use an appx installer, like this one here for Arch, or you can create your own installer file. This is a little bit complicated and I would not recommend this to someone who's doing it the first time. Maybe if you are a developer or a Linux distribution maintainer, then this one would be for you. But for the rest of us, there is an easy option, this one here. And this one uses a tar file. Let's open the link. Now this one basically says that we need to download a tar file of the distribution. And here you have the link to the Alpine Linux downloads. So if you want, you can download a tar file of your favorite Linux distribution, if there is one. But if you already have a Linux distribution running, and if you have root access to the system, then you can create a tar file from the running system. And that's what we will do in this video. Maybe you already noticed I'm running Parrot OS here. And by the way, I'm running full Parrot OS from a USB drive. It's not a live drive, it's a full Linux installation on a USB drive. In a previous video, I showed you how I can create one. So if you're interested how to create one for yourself and run full Linux from a USB drive, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. At the time of recording, Parrot OS is not officially supported by WSL. So this makes it a perfect candidate to install. Now open the terminal. And first let's run NeoFetch just to see what we have. So this is Parrot OS 5.3 and it's using the 6.1 kernel. Remember this because we will compare it after the import in WSL. Let's clear the terminal. First we need to create a tar file of the system. And of course there is a command for it. This one here. It's a bit longer but you can find it down in the description. So we are creating a tar file by the name parrot.tar.gz and we are excluding the slash proc folder and the slash sys folder because those will be generated anyways. Then I'm also excluding the file that I'm currently generating because it makes no sense to package this one as well. Then I'm adding the one file system parameter and this one makes sure that mounted file systems are not archived. For instance, mounted drives will be excluded. Be careful with this one because if you have, for instance, the home directory on a different file system, it will not be included. This is actually my case here as well, so I could actually delete this last exclude here, but I will leave it in for the sake of completeness. And of course I want to archive everything under root, as a root user of course. Enough talking, let's run this one. Enter. Now depending on the file system size, this can take some time. After about 15 minutes, it's done. And here is the tar file, it has 5.9 gigabytes. Now copy this file on a USB drive and let's go to Windows. So let's copy it. This is my mounted USB drive and I'm copying using sudo. Enter, copy. Perfect. Now let's go to Windows and I'll see you there. Here I am on Windows and I already plugged in the USB drive with the tar file that we created previously. Now we need to import this one in WSL as a Linux distribution. First we need to create a folder for the Linux distribution and I will create this one on the USB drive. New folder. And I will call it Parrot. Now, by the way, you don't need to create your folder on the USB drive. You can also create it on your hard drive. I created this one on the USB drive just to save space because the next step is to extract the Parrot OS into this folder as a virtual drive. And to do this, I will open the terminal here. So this is the PowerShell terminal and just write WSL dash dash import, then the name of the distribution. I called it Parrot, the name of the folder, Parrot as well and the name of the tar file, parrot.tar.gz. 
and let's import enter import in progress this may take a few minutes operation completed successfully now let's list the installed distributions ubuntu is my default wsl distribution and here we also have parrot so let's run this one wsl dash d parrot enter and run Perfect, I'm now logged in as the root user inside the Parrot OS distribution that we imported previously. Now let's see what we have here, NeoFetch. Now as you can see I'm running Parrot OS 5.3, but the kernel version is 5.10 and not the 6.1 as in the original distribution. So here we are using the modified Microsoft WSL2 kernel. If you don't want to use this one, then you can change it in your WSL config file, as I did in the previous video, where I showed you how you can read an ext4 USB drive in WSL. So if you're interested how to use a custom kernel in WSL, or how to read a USB drive with ext4 partition on it, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now as we saw, I'm logged in as the root user, but I can also log in as my real user from the original Linux distribution. So let's do it. Now I'm logged in with my user and I can make this one my default login user. First let's exit to root and then write this command right here. And with this one, I'm setting the default user inside the etc WSL conf file. Enter. You can find all those commands down in the description. Now let's log out and Terminate the distribution and now let's log in back to Parrot. And as you can see, I'm now logged in with my user. Now, one thing is still missing. If I search for slash home, as you can see, I'm missing my home folder. So let's create one, of course, with sudo. And now I also need to change the owner of this folder. Now, let's check again. Perfect, here is my home directory, let's go inside it, works as well. Now just to show you that this really is Parrot OS, let's run the Tor browser for instance, let's run it. Here it is, first it needs to install it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Tor browser running inside the WSL Parrot OS distribution. Let's connect. If this is the first time that you hear about the Tor browser, Check it out. You can make yourself almost untrackable with this one. It's really awesome and also a bit scary as well. If you like the videos I make and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. So using the method shown in this video, you can basically import any Linux distribution into WSL. In the next video, I will show you how you can make a backup or a snapshot of an existing WSL Linux distribution. So if you're interested, you can check out the link to the next video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, you also have a super thanks down there where you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.